Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. And in this video, we'll be taking a closer look at one of these Nano VNA antenna analyzers. To give it its correct title, it is a handheld vector network analyzer. It does far more than just analyzes antennas for CB and ham radio, but that's all I'm really gonna use it for because if you remember a while ago, I built my very first CB antenna. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. It was very much trial and error. And I was, for someone of quite little radio intelligence like myself, I was actually quite pleased that I did manage to get the antenna to work. But it was a real bind having to try and tune the SWR down, going back to the radio, just on a keying up on a basic sort of SWR meter. So when I was discussing this with the guys on the net, which included uh, Robbie, 297, and Awesome Dave, they all said, you need to get yourself a antenna analyzer to make the whole thing so much more easier and also more accurate. Now at the time I had looked at uh, antenna analyzers before, mainly sort of ham radio gear. And to be honest, I felt it was a too expensive for my hobby of CB. And then Awesome Dave did mention that on eBay, you can now get one of these little nano VNAs for handheld analyzers. And uh, he said, yeah, these would be perfect. And he, he was right. Now, if you want to sort of purchase sort of one of these, go on to eBay. Prices vary, um, it's, it's from anything from about sort of 25 pounds from China up to 50 pounds if you wanna buy in the UK. Uh, there seem to be a lot of clones around this sort of nano design. I don't know whether even this is a genuine one, it looks genuine, but of course you never know nowadays because everything is cloned so good. But as I say, they all just seem to be the same job. They all seem to have the same software. It's just the casework on the more expensive ones that are fully enclosed, whereas the cheaper ones seem to be a skeleton affair. When you first get the unit out of the box, and it is really quite nicely made, I've got to say this, I think I paid about 40 UK pounds for this. It's got a complete enclosed sort of box, just a basic sort of switches there at the top. And at the screen, I assume it's OED. It's very clear. It is very sort of clear. It is a touch screen. It's not the best touch screen in the world. If you're going to use it, you're going to need something like one of these little rubber dot pointers, to be honest, to get the best of it. But you can scroll through the menus using the little wheel there, and that's probably the best way to do it. Straight out of the box, you do have to calibrate the unit each time before you use it. It's quite easy to do. They supply you with these three little caps here. And it's just simple of going through the menu. You've got one cap which is a direct short. You have another cap, which is an open pin. It's just a through cap. And then finally, you have another little cap, which is a bit like what well, is a dummy load, basically. It's, a 50, it's got a 50 ohm resistor built into the cap. And you simply go through the menu system there when it requests it and attach each cap. And it only takes a couple of minutes and that's it, job done. You're ready to go. When you first start the little analyzer up, it is a little bit busy on the screen. You've got a lot of information here. You've got a lot of different traces. It does look a bit overwhelming, to be honest, but we're not interested in any of these traces. We just need one particular trace to analyze CB antennas, etc. So it's very easy. You just need to switch them off. I did find it, it did take me a little while, but you go into the menu here, the top one, is trace. This brings up the four traces that are on the screen. It's a little bit fiddly. It, the touch screen isn't the best, but by clicking on each one, you are able to switch them off. It can some does take a couple of presses sometimes. There we go. So now we are just down to a single trace, and, and that's what we all we need for what we're going to use the scope for. Now, as I said, I'm not really set up at the moment to start going outside and building dipole antennas, but I will be using this in the summer, so look out for that. My next attempt at building antennas will <laughs> be a little bit more technical. But I thought it might be interesting just for the sake of this video. We've got this little Bofung here, this treble eight. This is probably the most popular little Bofung radio. And uh, yeah, most people use these for PMR. These are available on eBay. You can pick these up for there's 10 pounds a throw. As always, you've got to be aware of sort of cheap imitation and counterfeit radios. It's very difficult nowadays to buy an original Bofang radio, but a little bit of perseverance with the sort of reviews, things like that. But these are very 
very popular and for good reason they're cheap and they work well and then i think on another video moving forward it'd be interesting to put one of these cheap imitation these the nagola 771 antennas these especially long antennas that you can fit to your uv 5rs and i've got it on this oliwiz radio now once again this is not a genuine antenna this is an ebay cheapy and these are incredibly cheap i think these are less than two pounds delivered i mean it's ridiculous really but uh, people have said in my other videos you know fred do you want to get that on an analyzer and let's check out the swr let's see how good this antenna is some people said that it can make the radio worse than using the standard sort of bowfang antenna other people have had better results and it's always been guesswork so in a, in a future video i will be testing the 771 imitation antennas against the standard bowfang radio and i think also i've also got one of these telescopic antennas here these are a dual band these are two two meter 70 centimeter antennas and i think it'd be interesting with the analyzer i should be able to tune this to the exact length that I need for 446 so I can get the most efficient tuned antenna get the most range the best receive so I'll probably do that as well on a separate video using the little antenna like an antenna analyzer analyzer so there's plenty of things sort of coming up but like I say just for this video just for the just for the hell of it let's test this standard sort of bowfang antenna that came with the triple eight and let's see how good or not this is on 446 PMR frequencies now I did do a little research before I started this experiment and they've said for handheld radios it's best to keep the antenna vertical it's also best not to hold it with your hand because that can affect the readings especially the SWR so I've concocted together in typical Fred in the Shed style this little stand here which is non-conductive plastic peg yeah it doesn't get more basic than that so I'll be using that keeping that sort of vertical and I'll be keeping my hands well away from the antenna as not to affect the results okay so the trace now on the screen is showing the SWR now with this trace the lower the better the lower these peaks are on the screen the lower the SWR so this little antenna we can see straight away that it's got two particular fields here of low SWR so using a little scroll wheel we can move the arrow down we'll measure the first one and that's coming in roughly 270 megahertz with an SWR of round about 1.9 it is varying to up to 2 um, but as I say, no good to us because the radio is operating from 400 to 470. So I'm hoping that this second peak is within that frequency band. So we're just going to very carefully move along to that. Hopefully you're getting this on the camera. I do apologise if the, if the lighting isn't particularly great. It's quite difficult to do. Right, on the bottom of that band there, and that's showing that the SWR of 1.35 going up just to 1.4 which is perfectly acceptable and that's at 477 megahertz so that's actually peaking just a little bit above the frequency this radio can operate on because bear in mind this goes up to 470 meg so even that's saying that the antenna isn't particularly great but if i was going to use this which i am on 446 so if i just back the little arrow up here and get as close to 446 as possible and if I go 450, there we go. So at 450, the SWR is, is relatively high. I don't know if you can make it out. It's at the top of the screen just there. You probably can't, but it's coming in at about 3.3 to 3.4. So yeah, I would say that's sort of quite high. So yeah, you are losing quite a bit of the transmit power due to a high SWR because this is a sort of multi frequency antenna and that's a little bit di disappointing to be honest and uh, okay well let's look at the resonant frequency next let's find out where this antenna is what frequency it's working best at right i've just adjusted the screen a little bit i'm trying to get the reflection off the screen hopefully you can see right well now we're looking at the antenna's resonant frequencies and as you can see there are three separate little troughs there which is showing that the antenna resonates on three different separate frequencies i think that's sort of quite common with most antennas that they do resonate more than just one particular band so if we go down to the first one there we go let's get that on the bottom there and at the bottom that comes in at 144 megahertz which is bang on the two meter handband so 
Although this antenna is supposed to be 400 to 470, it's actually a dual band antenna. It is actually resonating on the, the two meter frequencies. Moving on, so we go to the next trough, we'll see what, how it's doing now. Okay, and once again, that's come, oh, it's gone again. That's coming in about 270 to 279, yeah, about sort of 270. And then finally, the biggest trough there, the third one, which I assume is going to be round about the 470 mark, which is what the antenna is supposed to be doing. Uh, there we go. And straight as with the SWR, it is at its most resonant at 477 megahertz. So if I just back that off and get it close to 446, which will probably be 450. There you go. Yeah, and so 450, once again, it isn't really all that resonant at all. It's certainly nowhere near the sort of peak. So I think there is some truth in the people that have said in the comments before that, you know, if you're using one of these Bofung radios and you haven't got a tunable antenna, you're not really getting the best out of it. It's certainly not the best SWR at 446 and it's certainly not its most resonant at 446 as well. So yeah, I think those guys that left those comments were absolutely Absolutely. Right. I haven't really learned how to use this properly. I've just sort of typical Fred in the shed, more enthusiasm than kind of like knowledge, and I've just dived straight in. But straight away, you can see it's quite a handy little gadget. This is going to be brilliant when I come down to be building some new vertical, horizontal, and, and inverted V dipole antennas, which I'll be doing in the garden later on in the year. But just just testing antennas. I mean, it's hard to you can only but recommend it. I'm not going to leave a link to these uh, nano VNAs because there are so many on eBay, and by the time I leave a link, it will probably the listing would have ended and the seller may or may not be available but for around sort of 30 to 40 uk pounds i don't think they're much more in dollars um yeah i think it's a very very useful little tool only even if i'm only just scratching the surface of its capabilities and just using it for pmr and cb so look out for those other videos that will be coming up later on on this channel in the year when I'll be testing these imitation uh, 771 antennas and also when I'm building my own. But I just thought you'd like to look at it. I know everybody's still locked down at the moment, so you're probably getting all bored. So I just thought it'd be just something to show you what's gonna be coming up on Fred in the Shed in the future. But as now, as always, and more than ever, please stay safe, stay healthy, look after each other, and yeah, I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers now.